Buenos dias, buenas tardes, buenas noches, everyone. I'm your host today, Rob Medina, and I thank you all very much for joining me here today because today I'm reviewing the movie El Mariachi. Now, this year marks the 29-year anniversary of the film's release in theaters back on February 26th of 1993. But if you want to get technical here, this movie was actually released back in September of 1992 at the Toronto International Film Festival. So this uh, fall marks the 30-year anniversary of the film's release at that festival. But the reason I'm getting into this review for this movie uh, for is for a number of different reasons. But uh, I want to share a bit of a backstory about how I came across this film. So those who have never seen the show, You're So Cool with Ramadier here on the channel, I recommend you guys do check it out there because there's a lot of great guests I have on the show and a lot of very interesting conversations that I have with my guests on the show there. But during on more than one occasion, I've had a conversation about how this movie, El Mariachi, really changed my perspective on how I look at films in general. Now, the action genre is my favorite genre of all time. I love that genre with a passion. Like, that's that's my go-to. I always look for action films um, just to cheer me up and, and just to really have a good time in general. Because the action genre for me was always about the everyday man in most cases that is being thrown into these really ridiculous obstacles that they have to overcome, and yet they've been able to come out on top. With the guys like Sylvester Stallone, who is my favorite actor of all time, he was like the epitome of the everyday man who was thrown to these uh, outrageous uh, obstacles uh, that he had overcome and was able to persevere and uh, make it through at the end of the film. And I always love his movies, and I still do to this very day, as for those who don't already know. But guys like Stallone, uh, Van Damme, Seagal back in the old days, uh, Jackie Chan, Wesley Snipes, I mean, these guys were like the cream of the crop when it comes to action. So to me, the action star were those guys. Like those were the, the embodiment of what a man should be. So by chance, I came across this movie and I can't remember what channel it was on, but it might've been like on HBO, Cinemax, Showtime, one of those type of channels. And I happened to be doing something with the TV on and by chance, I came across a film as it got started. And right away, my first impressions of this movie when I saw it was that this looks very cheap and doesn't look very good. But what piqued my interest was that why is this Hispanic film on this channel? Like I said before, it was like on Showtime, Cinemax, because there's always these big budget American films that have been released in theaters and then were released onto those uh, channels a year or so later. So the fact that this is a, a foreign film that took place in Mexico on this American channel, I was very curious, so I was invested already. So as the story progresses, I'm gonna get into the plot here now. It, this follows the story of a mariachi who is making way into a town so that we can find gigs and hopefully get paid to play mariachi music. At the same time, there happens to be a hitman who was held up in jail who manages to break out and vows revenge on this villain uh, by the name of Moko, which I'll get into what, actually, what that actually means for those that don't know. Um, because he was a guy that put him in jail in the first place. So he also happens to carry a guitar case that's full of weapons. So Moko is telling his men, find this hitman, kill him, and you know, you'll know you get paid or whatever. I think that's how it was, if I recall correctly. I've seen the movie four times in my entire life, but I just happened to see it rather recently. And somehow I forgot that little detail there. But the point I'm getting at is that when I saw the film, the first thing that impressed me was that this was actually a very good movie. I was already invested with the story. But the second thing, which actually should be the first thing, but it was the second thing that I really noticed too, was that the leading man in this movie did not look like Stallone, did not look like Schwarzenegger, Van Damme, Seagal, um, Jackie Chan, uh, who else, uh, Wesley Snipes. I mean, he didn't look like those big muscular leading man types that we're, we've all been accustomed to in mainstream cinema. He just looked like some regular looking Hispanic man, guys that I know that look like that. And I was just blown away that, holy shit, you can make an action film with the guys that I've grown up with that look just like that. Cause I knew a lot of guys that look like that, that look like the mariachi. So I was very impressed with what I was watching. And then having learned later on that Robert Rodriguez had made the film for just under $9,000, like $7,000. And he made it in a, in a short span of time with very limited resources. And, and, and if you watch the, the behind the scenes of what he did, what he did to make the movie, and if you listen to his commentary as well too, he goes in depth about what he did to help save money and also be able to work around certain uh, things to be able to get the shots that he wants as best as he could considering the amount of time and uh, tape he had, or tape I should say, uh, 
uh, film he had while shooting the movie. It, all these little insights that I had no idea how to make on how to make a movie. He was sharing that stuff for everyone to hear because who, if anyone who wants to learn, he was giving them free information, and I found that to be really fascinating. So, kudos to Robert for having to uh, pr- be able to provide more insight about how to go about making a movie in a cheap manner and still make it entertaining as well too. So this movie to me changed my perception of how I looked at films because I looked at it and I thought, wow, guys like me could actually be in a film like that. And I want to see more of that. That had changed for me from that from watching that movie. Because before, when I would watch action films or just films in general, it was always about the characters. I never looked at it as color. Like there's a white guy, there's a, there's a black man, a Chinese man. It was just about the characters who just happen to be Chinese, African-American, uh, Caucasian, or whatever the case may be. But this was the first time I saw a movie with Hispanic men that looked like the guys I've grown up with here that didn't look like leading men. And here they are, or here he is, uh, uh, the actor Car- Carlos uh, uh, Gallero, I think is how pronounce his last name. He is just a regular guy, like legit regular guy who is thrown in this crazy uh, uh, situation that he has to go through in this movie. And it blew me away. So this movie does a, hold a very special place in my heart. And I hadn't seen it in quite some time. So there was a part of me that was concerned whether or not it actually would hold up very well. And to my surprise, it actually did hold up pretty well, actually, considering, you know, for how little the film was made and the shortcuts he had to take, uh, Robert Rodriguez, I mean, they had to take to shooting that film, which still impresses me till this very day. So I'm going to get into my positives. And then, of course, there is a few negatives I will get into as well. And then my rating. So my first positive is with the leading man in Carlos Gallero, I think he pronounced his last name. This is the guy that change like i said before my perception on how to look at a leading man a leading action star if that makes if, if that makes any sense because there was nothing extraordinary about this guy at all whatsoever he didn't have a, like a, a, a physique of, of a leading man he didn't have like this big strong powerful body it was he just looked like some regular old joe off the streets that no person would think twice about just by looking at him you know, when you look at Stallone, you look at this guy and you're like, holy shit, this guy looks like a, st- a movie star. This guy looks like he can fuck people up. But when you look at uh, the mariachi, you don't think twice about the guy at all. And that goes the same for everybody in this movie, too, because there's there's this misconception that, you know, I, and I understand why it is that way, because I'm sure if I was in the, in the if I was a, a film director and I wanted to make a movie, I, I want to have a certain look. So body types would definitely come in mind about how I want the character to be portrayed and who would be the actors that I would have in mind for these characters. So I'd understand under those circumstances here. But here in this particular case, these were just guys that I just remember thinking, he looks like my friend's uncle. He looks like my uncle. This guy looks like my neighbor. This guy looks like my grandma's neighbor. Like these, these were people that I recognized growing up. I'm not saying these act, these same exact actors, but they look like the people that were in my family, that were friends of my family that I've grown up with here. And I just couldn't believe that these guys, they look like me. They look like the people that I've grown up with here. And that's what appealed to me about this movie. So a major positive in that respect. The other thing is that the story is actually really good. It's actually a very simple story. Like as I said in the, in the, in the plot synopsis, when I was describing in the beginning, it just deals with a man who happens to be in the wrong place at the wrong time. And because he was miss uh he was being identified as the hitman when he in fact wasn't but despite his pleas he's not being hurt because they're sh- automatically shooting at him and how he's just running for his life so there's a lot of different factors about this film when it comes to the story that was very compelling for me personally now the other thing i want to point out too um does actually more or less have to do with the villain in this film a guy by the name of moko uh what, i remember when i first saw the movie i started cracking up because what what bad guy would ever want to be called Moko? For those that don't know what Moko actually means, and the mo- the word uh, Moko in English actually means booger. So the fact that this villain's name is Booger, it just didn't make sense to me. And, and in the film, his his real name is Mar- Mauricio, and I have a family member who has that name as well too, but never once crossed my mind to ever call him Moko. So I, f- I found that to be rather interesting, but it turns out that the actor that plays the villain of Moko in this movie is actually played by an American. But I had no idea that the actor whose name is Peter Marquardt did not speak a single word of Spanish, like at all. So basically, he had to learn his lines phonetically. But I didn't even notice how that, you know, that he was caught. Ca- I mean, I've seen a lot of Caucasian Hispanics, so it wasn't that's not uh, that's not uncommon for me to see. But 
It was just that his pronunciation of the of the Spanish language that he was able to articulate the words and pronounce it very accurately. A few words here and there I've noticed now in the later years when I've seen the movie only a handful of times, but when I've seen the film, I did pick up on the American accent creeping through. But overall, he did a pretty good job in pronouncing every single word to a T. For, for like I would say 95% of the time, for a man who did not know the language at all, he was able to be very convincing, very compelling when giving his, uh, his or delivering his lines, I meant to say. So a lot of kudos to Mr. Marquardt, who unfortunately had passed away at the age of 50 back in 2014. And he was actually, he actually did appear in the sequel to this movie, uh, Desperado, in a flashback sequence where, uh, I'm going to spoil this movie if you haven't seen it, but the the girl that he was in love with, who the mariachi was starting to fall in love with as well too, he ends up killing her. So in a flashback sequence uh, with uh, with Antonio Banderas now playing the mariachi in, in the later sequels, um, he was able to come back to reenact that scene from the original mariachi scene as well too. So I thought that was very interesting that they um, were keeping that consistent despite the fact they changed the leading actor for the sequels. But regardless of that though, the, the villain in this movie, in my opinion, was rather good. I mean, he didn't really do a whole lot of crazy things in the movie. He was just kind of more or less staying in place. Uh, and a lot of it had to do with the fact that he was reading his lines phonetically uh, off a cue card somewhere. I, I think he did a pretty good job in portraying the character of Moko in that, in that regard. So a lot of kudos to Mr. Marquardt because he did a fantastic job, in my opinion. Now, the other positive I want to point out does actually have to do with the action sequences in this film. Now, when you learn about what Rodriguez had done to make this movie, to shoot the film, to make it as uh, as compelling as possible to make the action sequences very interesting and engaging, for at least for someone like myself, um, you've, you find out that uh, the, what he had to do to get the shots that he wanted and make it seem like there was like 50 different cameras going on at once when in fact it was just him zooming in and out to get the sequences that he wanted to get so that way he can cut them at a certain uh, pace there. And that actually worked very well in this movie. There were times it felt like it was a little kind of off-putting, at least the first experience uh, when I first saw the film. That upon my repeat of viewing of this film, which I've seen an additional three times since the first time, I remember thinking that this was not as bad as I thought in that respect. And I actually appreciated that approach that he was going for. It, I love the fact that the film looks so grainy, looks so grounded. It looks like as if though you are really experiencing the person's uh, journey right with them. It's, as, as cliche as it may sound by me saying that, but there is something very compelling about that style of directing that looks so gritty, looks so investing. It was so investing for me that I was instantly hooked upon watching the film for the very first time. As I said before, my first impression is that this movie looks cheap because it was a cheap film to make. But the way that it was handled in terms of the directing, the editing choices and the the, the sound designs and what else, uh, the acting, among other things as well, too, including the action sequences. It was all very uh, engaging stuff for me from right from the get go and up until the very end as well, too. There's something about this character of the mariachi that to me, it, it, now it makes sense to me why you know why wouldn't the film be called the mariachi because if you think about it you can take a name as simple as the mariachi to work to everyone to someone else may just be like a simple guitar player which that was what he was in the movie but then become somebody else very dangerous as a result of his journey that he's gone through in this film where he became a changed man now he is a man of uh, you know he's a lonely guy who is now going to i guess and more in, in a lot of ways especially when you see in the sequels pretty much take on anyone that's out to get him and he is also a person who is willing to take out the bad guys now that he's had this experience of what he has gone through in this movie he is someone that you don't want to mess with and that movie certainly establishes that so that way when you see the sequel of desperado it all makes sense even though when you look at that movie all in its own it pretty much is its own isolated movie for the most part but watching this movie and then seeing Desperado, it all made more sense as I saw the sequel, basically, because I did see this movie first, and then I saw Desperado. So I think that the film, in, in as, as far as it being an isolated movie, it works effectively, in my opinion. Now, there are many other things about the film that I can also point out, too, that I did thoroughly enjoy. Uh, just just the fact that we have little, uh, little nice little tidbits about certain little character quirks, uh, character quirks, I meant to say, that you get to see with these characters like the, the hitman Asul uh, who in the movie I come to find out was actually a 19 year old kid <laughs> he was 19 but when you look at the guy on, on, on the screen he looks like he's pushing 40 but he was really 19 years old which I was blown away with and I've known guys growing up who look like that 
who I thought were a lot older, but in reality, they were way younger than I thought. Like, I remember at one time when I was a kid, I met a guy who was like, who might have been, I think he might have been 17. This guy looked like he was fucking 35, 40 years old, but he was 17 years old. This one I was in Nicaragua, because who's my family's from. And I just was blown away, like how, how young this kid is and how old he looked as well, too. So, you know, when I saw that and then watched that in the movie, I was like, I get it because I knew guys like that, but I was just blown away. So, you know, my, my, um, I wouldn't say that I love the movie because I really do like the film. It's a very good film, but it's not like my top favorite movies of all time. But this movie does hold a very special place in my heart because this movie gave me, I wouldn't say hope, but it definitely gave me, uh, the, the awareness of like, I want to see people like me on screen. I want to see regular guys that I've grown up with here on screen. I want to see that more often. And Robert Rodriguez brought that for me here. And uh, I'll always uh, uh, cherish that and respect the film a great deal because of that. And I've been a fan of Robert Rodriguez since I was a kid, although I don't necessarily like all his movies, but I am a fan of him as a director. I think he's still a very, very good director, despite some films he makes that I'm not a fan of here. But a good chunk of his earlier stuff I am a very big fan of and I think he's still a phenomenal director as well as a good screenwriter too in my opinion so this will be the end of my positives so now let's get into my negatives so my first negative with this movie um, it's gonna be kind of hard for me to explain because uh, I really didn't put too much thought into because I just remember thinking I wish the film was directed better is because I know I said earlier that the film is very well directed because it is it is a very well directed film I'm not saying that it isn't but there was a part of me even upon watching this film again in preparation for this review where I felt like it could have still have been better and a lot of it does have to do with the fact that there's just virtually no time so Rodriguez had to find a lot of shortcuts to get the shots that he wanted and although they actually do work in hindsight you know especially when you learn what he had to do to get the film uh, to look the way that it does because of just the amount of time and and um, the lack of uh, budget they had for this movie it makes sense and in a lot of ways, as I don't want to sound like I say, I don't want to say it's I'm forgiving of that, but I understand the circumstances. So, considering with what he was able to work with here, it still turned out to be pretty good. But there's still a part of me that wonder that would like to see this film hand directed a lot better because then when you watch the movie like Desperado, which was a, a a superior movie in terms of the 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 production value, the the budget, and so on and so forth, you could clearly see that Rodriguez is a very good director especially after you watch that movie but when you watch El Mariachi you saw the potential but Desperado you saw the the, the mark that he left uh, as far as uh, the Hollywood scene is concerned because he really made a fantastic film in Desperado which I think is still the superior movie of El Mariachi um, but Mariachi was really like the the uh, the you know what, what's the best way I could describe it it, was, it just showed what he was capable of pulling off here with the limited resources that he had and he did a fantastic job but still a part of me wishes it could have been directed a lot better especially after seeing uh, seeing um desperado but with that being said though my other negative about this movie that i'm going to point out here um you know the 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 character of asul who is the hitman that is us uh, has set on revenge to get uh moko that part of the story I always felt was rather lacking because even though he's definitely very heavily invested in the story, he's, he is a part of the plot, I felt like his character wasn't really used as effectively as I thought he could have been used, especially now I've, having seen it again uh, in preparation for this review. I, I felt like that that was kind of a wasted character. If anything, you know, I probably would have liked to have seen him being used in another capacity where it wouldn't have felt as a, like such a wasted character because that character had a lot of great potential and, and it's weird because he is in the film quite a lot whereas someone like Moko who was just this guy who was a man in, in, a, in a position of power who you know just by standing around and giving orders people would respect and obey his every word for the most part I would say they all knew that when he gave the orders they had to listen right away or they're fucked so I like the use of the character of Moko in this movie as the main villain. I thought he was better utilized, although he did the absolute uh, least of all the characters as far as his movements are concerned. He just he barely threw any punches at all. And then when he does finally kill someone, it happens to be the girl that he uh, was supposed to be in love with here that the mariachi fell in love with in the plot here. So, you know, as far as the action is concerned in that respect, not a lot of it happened with Moko and 
virtually none of it happened with the character of Asul, who is the hitman that is the driving force, more or less, of this story here. So I wish that could have been handled a little bit better. But really, that's going to be the end of my negatives here because there really wasn't that many issues that I had with the film outside of those really, other than what I just pointed out here, here in my negatives. But overall, you know, I still think it's a great movie. So now let's get into my rating. Now, even though I said earlier this is a great film, this movie is not like my top favorite of anything. It really isn't, unfortunately. It's, and I don't know why. It just, I don't really have that sentiment towards the film in that respect. But it does hold a very special place in my heart because this movie made me realize I want to see more guys like me on the screen like i want to see more of that i want to see hispanic action stars because i think it'd be really cool to see that uh, more often uh, in in in, uh, in films and we got that with antonio banderas although he is spaniard but still he was playing a mexican character so he was definitely playing hispanic in the movie but the fact that we get to see a a, a spanish man playing uh, an action hero that was so cool to me i, I was like i want to see more of that so the, the the mariachi trilogy uh series for me is is a very good one with maybe with the exception of the third film but i don't think the movie's all that bad but it definitely wasn't as good as the first two in my opinion so i still think that with what i have said about the movie it still holds very true to me but it's not a film that i always feel like going back to but Having uh, come across that this film was marking its 29 year anniversary, I definitely felt like it was important to highlight this movie because this movie certainly did change a lot of uh, things here for me personally, especially when I, how I look at films and how films are being made and so on and so forth. So for me, I give this movie a solid cheers. And those are my thoughts on the film. If you have seen the movie, let me know what you guys think in the comment section down below. And if you haven't done so already, and you should have, make sure you subscribe to the channel, make sure you share and like your videos, and hit that notification bell while you're down there. And follow us on our social media accounts on Instagram, New Release Wednesdays, and on Facebook, Nerds Rule the World, and on Twitter, at the NRW. Follow me on my social media accounts on Instagram and Twitter, Mr. Rob Medina, and on Facebook, simply just Rob Medina. And I have a show on the channel called You're So Cool with Rob Medina, and you can follow the show's social media accounts on Instagram, You're So Cool with Rob Medina, and on Twitter, You're So Cool WRM. And I want to thank you all very much for joining me here today. I hope you guys did enjoy this review, and until next time, everybody, stay safe out there, and cheers. Cheers.